You know, in this world, there's some things that it's good when you get them named after you. When you get a street, when you get a building, uh, when you get, I, I, I don't even know. There's some good things that when it's named after you, that's great. Then there are other things that you can get named for that are bad. Sometimes bad things happen and you're thought of that. And oh, hey, there's, here's the memorial wastebasket. You don't want to get named after a garbage can or something like that. And in this town, well, there's a lot of things I think we would name after Art Modell. Sometimes you walk down this. Ah, he's dead, Ryan. I can't do that to him. Sometimes my neighbors don't pick up after their dog. Okay, fine. He's passed away. I'm not throwing dirt on that grave. Or dog food. But anyway, Art Modell, that name in this town makes a lot of people cringe. He's one of those names the second you hear of it, you know who he is, what he does this out, all that kind of stuff. So when I hear Councilman Brian Casey up there pitching the Art Modell rule, you know that's probably not a good rule. That's one of those things you don't want to be named after. He's got an idea. I don't think that there is any way in any chance that anything he said is going to get passed but we'll bring up the rule we'll talk tax dollars for the stadium i've got draft needs for the cleveland browns chad Ryder, nfl.com the five positions he believes the browns need to get after in the draft guardians tough out for mckenzie last night calves we got our boost for tonight Ryan likes it. Oh, I love I it. I like Matt. when you like the boost. We'll get to that coming up. We got time up. We got the morning update. The grid, our bracket of the week. It's a two for Tuesday right here on Big Play. Welcome to the show, everybody. I am Matt Fontana. He is Ryan Tyler. Good morning. Happy to have you alongside. A lot to get to. Our bracket is up and rolling for the finals for the best bar in Cleveland. I voted Clevelander. I love the other ones I do. I just, of the ones that I go to the most, and not that I go to bars all that often, Clevelander got my vote. So it's at Matt Fontana's yeah. show. Drop us a follow there. Scorchers, Mulligans, Fatheads, and the Clevelander are the finals for the best bar in Cleveland. So we'll get to that coming up as well. We'll dive into some Cavs are back in action tonight. Ryan didn't like when I said take the spread tonight. But I said the Cavs have no choice but to blow out the Jazz tonight. If they don't, if this is even a close game tonight, we're in a lot of trouble. So we get some Cavs coming up. Guardians, tough game last night. Excuse me. Um, McKenzie just didn't have it. Okay, first start. He's been out. We'll, we'll talk some guards coming up as well because I have World Series tiers. Not, not these tiers. But, like, where do you think the Guardians would be at? I'll give you a hint. Their time is not now. <laughs> Tier one is their time is now. Dodgers, Braves. Yeah, they're really good. So I'll get to that coming up. Browns this morning, though. So yesterday, Cleveland City Councilman Brian Casey had, at the council meeting, announced his plans to introduce legislation, which he has dubbed the Art Modell Rule, to allow the law director to fully enforce restrictions on the owners of professional sports teams that play in taxpayer-supported facilities and receive financial assistance from the state or city that they cannot move. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna parse through this. I know Cody sent the tweet for a good chunk of the video. You couldn't even hear him. So we got the clips later. Here's basically what it is. Outside of the the legal mumbo jumbo, here's what it is. If you play in a facility that gets any sort of tax break or money from the city. You cannot move that team without a six-month notice and the right within that six months to put the team up for sale and have somebody else in the city buy the team. That's pretty much it. So I want to play it this way. If the Browns announce we're going to Brook Park under this new rule, which I will start by saying, no offense to Councilman Casey, it ain't happening. But under this rule, it would be the Haslam's announced they want to go to Brook Park. They have to submit that to the city of Cleveland with a six-month notice. Within that six months, Ryan and I come up with $2 billion. Start a GoFundMe. They have to sell the team to us. There is no choice of that. That ain't happening. There's no way that's happening. The NFL would never let that happen. Okay. Gives the, okay. And I like there's work, gives the political subdivision, which in the facility is located, 
not less than six months advance notice of the owner's intention to cease playing most of its home games at the facility. And here's the important part. During the six months, six months after such notice gives the political subdivision, city of Cleveland, or any individual or group of individuals who reside in the area of opportunity to purchase the team. You got someone that's got, how much, the, I should have looked this up prior. What are the Cleveland Browns valuation right now? What do you think they're worth? <laughs> Four or something? <laughs> Four and a half billion dollars. <laughs> Who has that maybe money? maybe if uh, when Tra- when and Travis retires, him and Taylor get married, that, they move to Cleveland, that's, live happily ever after, that's buy the just Browns. The value, Ryan, You're t- they would pay more. Oh, Travis and Taylor Swift have to pay five two. It's that, just what it's worth. Taylor's got that bag. Oh on. yeah, I'm sure she does. That's not happening. Who's richer, Jimmy Haslam or obviously it's got to be Taylor Swift, right? No, it's got it's Jimmy Haslam. You think? Yes, Taylor Swift. Maybe I'm tripping. Oh, you are tripping. B- big, yeah. Uh, net worth. Go, go okay. I mean, her her Dude, damn cat is worth I'm just saying, millions. And I'm not. Million. I am not sniffing at this. Okay, she's worth one point one billion dollars. Damn, Jimmy is Jimmy's worth. Jimmy's really got eight, that bag. Eight billion. You want? Okay. Do not clip this and send this to anybody. But everybody that's watching, I'm not saying that Jimmy's not rich. He's rich. Eight billion, bro. Look how much Dan Gilbert's worth. You know how much Dan Gilbert's worth? No. Dan Gilbert's worth twenty nine billion. Damn. So it's like I, <laughs> I can say this because I'll never enter that realm. Like Jimmy is rich. He's not rich, rich. You know, and like there are other owners in. Like, look, go look at uh, not even Tepper. Uh, who's a crazy guy that danced? Oh, Steve Ballmer. Yeah. How much is he worth? So what's what's Elon's bag looking like? Steve Ballmer. Does Elon have more? Elon's got to have more money than Steve that. Steve Ballmer is worth a hundred and twenty five. Billion dollars. Steve Ballmer's Microsoft, right? Or yeah, my, yeah, yeah. Elon Musk net worth one hundred ninety-five billion. Yeah, one hundred and ninety-five point three billion dollars for Elon. What do you even do with all that money? Buy the NFL. He could buy every single NFL team. Can you imagine really the Elon to. run league? Maybe in Mars. Oh, we'll get our first football franchise in Mars. Welcome back to the Elon League, brought to you by Tesla. Just a bunch of trucks. What if they created a, a, a Elon should do this? Create football, but do it like Rocket League with the Cyber Trucks. That would be. I'd awesome. watch that. Get Joe Rogan out there throwing arrows at I don't it. Come got on that much now. money, but I'd invest. Come on I'd now. Have to invest in that. Come that, on now. Rocket. That would be so. A sweet. live action Rocket League with Cyber Trucks from Elon. That would be so sick. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. All right, final one. Jeff Bezos. Hundred and ninety eight point four billion. Yeah, but his wife took that no, bag from him. I think that might actually be after. Wow. Oh, yeah. Here you go. His net worth as of to I'm sorry, as of last month, March second, twenty twenty four, one hundred and ninety nine billion dollars. That's yeah. after his wife. That prenup was crazy. And that night, and by the way, shout out to her. She donated a bunch of money to Cleveland. She did. Hey, get, call them. Yeah, call sure. them. I'm just kidding when I say, who needs it for the schools and art programs? I mean, come on. I'm just kidding. Because she donated a lot of money to the city of Cleveland. All right. Uh, we got into net worth because we were talking about that. And we're going to post our two for Tuesday. Do you have a problem using tax dollars to pay for the new for a state? And here's the thing. People are going to get so pissed. But it's not like they have a choice. Because you know? they're going to they're going to complain about, oh, I'll spend money if I get a dome. No, you don't do that. That's not how this works. You either get to... Are you okay with tax dollars going towards the Brown Stadium? And maybe you put that in there, Ryan, of the question of wherever that stadium is or if it's the renovation. Because I know people are going to say, oh, I would give tax dollars, but only if it meant I got a dome or only if it meant I got a new stadium. You have no control over that. I just want to get a little gauge of the people. Are you okay with these tax dollars? And I, I, I'd be the first to tell you I'm not all up on how everything works on the political science side of things and all that. Could this not go to a vote? I'm being dead serious on this. Could not the city of Cleveland during an, I I know there's an important election that's much more important than this coming up, but could they not call a special election and say, if you want to come vote on this, do it. And they ask Cleveland residents and even the city's uh, Cuyahoga County, do it all. They could break it up. City of Cleveland, Cuyahoga County. The question is, do you want a tax levy and call it that, 
to go towards the stadium. Have us vote on it. Is that not the point of a democracy? Can we not vote on this? And we're going to do a little impromptu voting today. Much like the regular votes, a lot of people might not show up for us, but that's okay. I just said, as long as you voted, you're allowed to complain. If you didn't vote, shut up. You have a problem, with, and trust me, there's problems on both sides. I consider myself a real independent. But if you didn't vote, don't say anything. So this is the same thing. If you don't care, not a problem, but don't complain about it. You can complain about it if you cast your vote on this and you're on one side or the other. Do you have a problem with tax dollars going towards the Browns facility, wherever it might be and in whatever version it might be? There's the idea out there that $8 billion, Jimmy Haslam's net worth, you can fund that. You're a billionaire. You own the team. Somebody said this to me. It's like owning a car and saying you don't want to pay for your garage. No. You want to store your car somewhere? You have to pay for that. No. Shout out garage beer. Right. Shout out garage beer. Have some nice garage beers in your garage with your nice car. But, like, it, it's different for me. And I'm going to straight up tell people, I, I have no problem. I have no problem with my tax dollars going towards it. Because I'm going to go to a game with my son one day. I'm going to root for the Cleveland Browns. Would I feel differently if they're in Brook Park? Not necessarily. They're still the Browns. I'm still going to root for them. I'll still probably go to games there. But I have no problem with it. I want all the teams downtown. I like that the Guardians and the Cavs play downtown. I like being able to go to games like that. So for me, the tax dollars all work out. On top of the fact that I can sports bet in this town now, yeah, kind of what I do is related to the teams. It's that important, sure. I'm talking about just as a, as a, as a lifelong Clevelander, as a father, a husband, a son, a brother that has grown up in Cleveland, I want my teams to stay here, specifically downtown. And I pay my taxes. They're done, by the way, which is great. Shout out to uh, Marianne Boyer. She's the best maps. Taxes are done. If they take a little piece of that, to send it over to the to the stadium. Great. Now I still want my taxes going to roads. Got to talk to my councilman. Potholes, please. It's bad. I want it going to schools. I want it going to, and that's the thing. You can only divide the pie up so much. There's only so much money that can go around. Now the other thing that we might get some responses, and I can see them coming already, but I'll tell you what it is, right? Would this be more tax dollars? Because what I'm talking about is. The tax dollars that are already allocated, the tax dollars that are already accounted for, would you be okay with a new tax? Would you be okay with a new tax levy that we get sometimes for schools, right? And it's, a, it's always a big thing about school levies failing and things like that. Would you be okay with a new tax, I think is an interesting question. I and mean, certainly me and you would be. Again, I have no problem with it. I'm all for but it. But it's like it's like people that when they don't, I have a lot of people like um, when I went to school in Ardonia, a lot of people, it had a lot of older people, their kids were no longer in school, so they felt like, well, why do I, why, why would I vote for this levy to pay more sure. when I no longer and, have kids and, going and to the I, school? And I'll tell you what, it's the same thing of people that don't root for the teams. It's the same thing. There could be people that go cast their votes that I don't watch football. I don't care about basketball. So I'm going to vote no. Now, the other side of it, I know die hard Browns fans that don't want to spend their tax dollars because they rightly come back and say, Matt, I spend thousands of dollars on season tickets. I pay to park there. I buy a pretzel and a beer when I get into the game. They're getting enough money from me. Now you're going to take it out of my tax too, and I understand that part of it as well. But then you start playing a, 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 a kind of a an iffy game here on them re raising season ticket prices or getting PSLs back. And at that point, you're paying $10,000 to get a seat license just to then have the right to pay for your seats. Do you know what a PSL is? Pri uh, I think it's private seat license. So if you want to buy season tickets, you have to get a license to even have the right to own those tickets. Because if you ever go resell them, you're technically a license, you're a vendor. You're selling your tickets off to people. They had those in 1999. When the Browns first came back, they had PSLs. They got rid of them years ago. 
Part of the reason I believe that they brought him back was they needed to raise some money to get that stadium up. And that's a whole nother conversation about, dude, they rushed to get that stadium up as quickly as they could because they didn't want the NFL to go back on their deal and they wanted to start for the 1999 season. They rushed it up. Art Modell, I'm sorry, geez, oh man, Art Modell, Al Lerner, <laughs> who bought the team said, I just get the stadium up, I'll fix it up. And he passed away. Don't ever forget, one of the worst things that ever happened to the Cleveland Browns yeah. was Al Lerner passing away. That team was on the right track with him. He was a good owner. He wanted to redo the stadium, and he unfortunately passed away and gave it to his son who didn't give a flying about the team. Well, Matt, how much do you think it uh, contributes to people that are voting no, they don't want their tax dollars? Because, because the way we worded it was, and we wanted to be specific, was you don't have a choice whether it's the dome or um, a newly or a renovated one still here on the lake. How much do you think people are deterred by it if it is just a renovation because they look at it as just kicking the can down the road or like we're going to have to do this again in another X amount of years where if we were just to build a dome, obviously that would be there for what, 20, 30 years, whatever it is. Yeah. You know? No. I, and that's my thing is there's other use. Like that's the other thing about the tax dollars, right? If it can't, if you don't care about sports, but you care about Taylor Swift, then you'd be saying, all right, I want the dome because then I can get Taylor Swift, right? Or I can get a final four. People are, I think rightly so, getting wrapped up in that because, right, they want to know what they're paying for. They want to know if you're going to take our tax dollars, this is what we want it to go towards. Yeah, now, fair. that doesn't always happen. Again, my tax dollars, there's streets in West Park that have been the, it's like driving on the moon, and it's been that way for years. Show up, I didn't want to say my councilman, but it's not hard to find out. Show up at your councilman and starts, well, where's this money going? It's no different. I want my potholes filled in West Park, and some people want a dome for Cleveland Brown Stadium. Two different price points, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Two different price points. And that's the other thing. The money. That's why I, I, I'm questioning this Brook Park stuff for a lot of reasons. But I'll tell you this. We're having trouble. Are we not having trouble coming up with a billion dollars? Where are you going to get three? 2.8 or whatever it's going to cost for a brand new domed stadium. Now, the Haslams would obviously take a bigger chunk, right? Because they would view it as this opportunity to build it up and turn it into what they think it is with shops and restaurants and hotels and all this other kind of stuff. Can I tell you a conversation I have with somebody? And this, is, this isn't somebody that's not, you know in with the Browns or kind of... Because, again, this is all fluid. What did I say yesterday? Anybody that says they and tell you what's going on, nobody knows. And that's another big problem with this thing is everybody's... Nobody knows. Eb and it's tough because they're going to be, but everybody's in the dark on this. Can There's I, so little information that we know. I got to be a jerk for a second. The conversation I was having with somebody, they go, yeah, I think the Haslam's vision would be turning that into Crocker Park. Could you imagine Crocker Park with the Browns Stadium? That would be their idea of what they would do at Brook Park. Where you go shopping, you can go to the coach store, you can stop at Canado Tacos, which is very delicious, go to the movies, and the stadium is right there. That's not happening at Brook Park. It's not happening there. I just, I, maybe I don't see the vision. I don't know. I really don't. And that's the thing. You would say it's got everything you would need. What's, what, what's so great about Crocker Park, right? What's so different about that? You're right off a highway. You'd be closer to the airport now. I just don't see that. Maybe it is. Maybe that's the grand vision idea that they have if that is the road that they want to go down. I still believe that their number one priority is to renovate and stay on the lakefront, but that's another conversation for another day. So if that's what they want to, if, if that is the ultimate goal, if people sat down, Ryan, and, and they said, hey, we're going to get this tax levy here, but this is our idea. This is what we want to do. Then people would have a better idea of what they want to spend their money or what the, the tax dollars would be spent on. Me, call me a simple man. I kind of am. My tax dollars get taken out, and that's all I know, right? I get a check like everybody else. I look at it. It's taken out for state, federal, and Social Security and all that other stuff. Great, fine, good, and it goes into my bank account, and I spend it on my kid. That's it. Where that money goes beyond that, maybe I should care more. But there's also a level of futility in that. Is there not? Because, like... Again, I don't mean to rip on Brian KZ, the councilman. That's not happening, man. That's not. Okay? And I appreciate him standing up there to try to get the needle moved on this a little bit. Or try to make a stance from the city of Cleveland. Because there are some people that are getting frustrated with... I say Mayor Bibb, knowing that it's really the, the city of Cleveland. Yeah. Because they got all pissed that at the the the... the 
what is it? The state of the state, the state of the city or whatever it was a couple of days yeah, ago. the address. The address of the city. And he didn't mention it. And people are starting to get frustrated because the city of Cleveland has not said anything or put out a statement since or what. And I go, well, of course not. They're in, what in Mayor Bibbs? Somebody grabbed him after and he said, we're in active negotiation. What do you want me to say? And that's good. It goes back to your whole point of, of when you go back to GMs. I just used the example of Odell because we talked about it before. They're just... With the in, they only have the information they have right now. They're not going to come out and say something based on may, a probability. The the are they lying or are they just telling you what information they yeah. have today? The whole thing was when when Dave Gettleman. So we're not trading Odell, and then they did. Was he lying or were they operating on the information they had two months ago, a month and a half ago? The Pittsburgh Steelers said we're all in on Kenny Pickett. Now he's not even there. Were they lying or were they just operating on the information they had at that time? It's tomato tomato. However you want to look at it. The same thing with the city of Cleveland. The same thing with the Haslam's. They're not going to say anything right now because they're still working on all of this. And I think an important part, and I'm not saying we send our poll to the Browns saying this is the pulse of the fans, but I do think a massive important part of this whole thing are the fans and the taxpayers. Get some focus groups going here. Get a vibe on how people would feel. And the Haslam's and the city of Cleveland got to remember it is still about us a little bit as the fans. Don't you think it'd be a good idea if they polled people to ask, would you rather drive to Brook Park or would you rather drive downtown? Do they still do consensus? Do that's what I'm saying. That's kind of what sense. Yeah. Like, oh, do yeah. Something on the website yeah, or something yeah. like that. Right. But that's what I'm saying. Like, get a little vibe of your customers. We are the customers of the city of Cleveland. We are the customers of the Haslam's. Get a little vibe of what we want. Do you think they're gauging social media? And no, I don't like think that? they. I well, don't think no, at all. I know that they always do because they monitor, they want to see, but that's usually on some other stuff. This one, you don't really think it factors at all. I don't know if they care, and it's a great question. Should they care? I should, think so. Should we? And I'm going to say, like us, you and me, sitting right here, wherever you're at, you're at work, you're at home, wherever. You and me sitting right here. Should we have a place at this table? I mean, we're funding the product. I, I think so. I think so. That It'll never be a consensus, ever, on everybody that's on board with this or that. I think they should talk to some fans. Well, that's the problem. And I, get an idea of what I, we want. That's the problem, though. It's like Monopoly. Nobody's going to stop no, watching they, football. That's what I'm saying. Nobody's going to boycott football. Like, they, that's not going to happen. What did KZ say about Timbuktu? They could put it in Timbuktu and people are going to show up, right? Yeah, that, that's the thing. It, the, the, like, they could build the city. And it's not going to stop people from going to Brook Park. It's not going to stop people from going to Browns games. I think the bigger thing is the tax dollars. That's kind of why we we're asking it this morning. Do you have a problem with it? Would you have a problem with tax dollars, your money, going to whatever facility is built? I'm very clearly no. I have no issue with it. An early 75, no, 25, yeah. Okay, yeah. And I also think because it's a borderline inevitability. That, it's going to happen, well, that's so it's like just there's accepting nothing you can do it about it. Yeah, there's nothing we can really do about it. Well, the other thing, and I, I again, it wouldn't raise nearly as much money. Because the thing is, even if you're a Browns fan, I'm trying to think about it this way. Say you have somebody that is not a Browns fan, they don't even root for Cleveland, and they really don't care in the least about the teams. Is there a way that they wouldn't have to pay for that tax? Or It's kind of like the sin tax, right? When you buy alcohol and tobacco, part of that money, which we looked it up the other day, it's like pennies, it's nothing that really helps. What would those tax dollars be? And you want to know what the answer is? Tickets and concessions and parking because you're getting them from people that want to go to the games. So unless you want to be prepared for, dude, what did they raise the season tickets this this past season? Or what have they raised them over yeah. the last couple of years? And people are freaking the F out. It's going to go up. You're going to get bid on this anyway. You're going to get a bid with your tax. You're going to bid when you go down to the game. Well, so like when it comes to terms of parking, Matt, who, when, when, when well, it, that's they're complaining about, or they're going back and forth on who owns the parking, right? That's what I'm saying. So then if it did go to Brook Park, would that money go straight to the Browns, all of it? Because if they had that well, big parking spot right around it, kind of like the like one of the one of the One of the pitches would be that Brook Park is basically, that land is their land. And right. You so Brook it. Park's interest would be other things, like outside of the stadium, people stopping yeah. at gas stations, people living in, ho or stopping in hotels well, that are Who gets it all right now? Just people who own the lots? City of Cleveland owns that lot north of the thing, I think. I'm pretty sure. And that's just one of them, right? Do they well, but the same thing. What Browns, What? But, uh, from my understanding, the Browns have no parking. Muni lot is municipal. That's the, the, what, yeah, that, that is all the city of Cleveland. 
Burke Lakefront, where we're at, that city of Cleveland. The Pit, city of Cleveland. And again, I'm pretty sure that North Coast lot is city of Cleveland. So how could they stand to lose that? Their comeback would be if we redevelop the area, yeah, they right. would make more money. Now, again, look at Muni lot. $50, $50, $400 for that RV right there. Like, yeah. Dude, drive down Muni lot today. Not even, uh, like, a tenth. I can see it. A tenth. I you can, can literally see it out look the to my left right. and I see Muni lot. A tenth of it is filled. The other part of it they're using for their snowplow, uh, snowplow truck maneuverability test. And I'm not even kidding. Yeah, kids doing their I'm not even test. kidding. And the kids do their driving test. So that would, those are all things that they're sitting down with the money people, the city of Cleveland, the Browns, all that stuff. They're figuring it out. So you brought it up because city councilman Brian Casey brought up this Modell plan. And, I, okay, I, and this is mean to me. I, I don't know any of this or anything like that, but I'm just going to say, this also sounds like, dude, I just like my new, I, I would like my name attached to the I don't want the Browns to leave, which is a good way to pull at people and say, man, I'm on your side with this. I've never seen the show, but how much is this like a Parks and Rec episode? Well, I, focus groups are a lot of like what happened. Yeah, I mean, Parks and Rec gives you that little insight of government work, I guess. Ron Swanson would be walking around here very happy because all about capitalism. Would Ron Swanson be a dome guy or a renovate guy? Well, he is a capitalism. He's a libertarian is what he is. So he like he likes no government. So he would actually probably like the Haslam's Ooh, leaving to Brook Park to Brook Park because in the capitalist. Yeah mindset there's a chance for them to make more money and charge more money to people and all that kind of See, stuff we're asking the questions that people want to know on this show yeah what would ron swans get nick offerman up here i'd love to talk to him last of us was great wasn't he good in that did you watch last uh, of us i've only watched i need to watch oh that. my god I so know. you have not gotten to the episode with him no oh my god that might be it's the, I, honestly no joke it's probably the best episode of all of it it's great watch it it's awesome get nick offerman get lad mcconkey one two nick offerman on this where's show. nick offerman from no idea. I, th- I would say Boston, I'm going to guess. Uh, I don't know. Illinois. Oh, Illinois. There you go. Oh, he's going to stadium. Yeah. Chicago. But is he a Bears fan? I don't know. I don't know. I just kind of assumed. Yeah. Married uh, Megan Mullally. Yeah. Yeah. She's kind of. There's episodes of Parks and Rec because she played his ex-wife on it, which was really funny. There's one. Oh, yeah. All right. We got a lot to get to. You want to break? You want to get some draft news? Yeah, Let's please. break. All right. Let's do this. We'll get to that when we come back. I've got the draft needs for the Browns from NFL.com. We'll get to our Cavs boost tonight. We'll get to some Guardians as well. We got the morning update. Plenty to come right here. Fontana Show. Tipico is the place to go. All right, we missed our boost last night. That's okay. McKenzie with an off night. Our boost is ready to go. Is it up already? Yeah, you want to do it? Oh, yeah, let's go. Here we go. Yeah. Ryan wanted an alternate spread. I said, don't don't worry, my young friend. All right. Cavs are covering. Don't worry. All right. And I... You know, the bad luck we've had with Darius Garland betting on this show. 24 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. Come on now. That's Come a low on number, now. man. That's a low number. I like that a lot. And then we'll we'll splash the Max Drews threes tonight. I think it'll be a little bit of an offensive explosion what if here. Darius just, just hits that with points straight up. I mean, he might. He might. Wouldn't that be nice? Boost it on up, Ryan. Our three leg boost is a healthy plus 445. Let's go. Code Fontana 100. I'm shooting some more typical action today to get ready for the final four. Get those bets in women's final four. What a game. That's what dude. a game I, last night. No joke. So I was at the Blue Jackets game last night. Yeah! They smoked the avalanche. I got my win on Tipico last night. Jackets, baby. Yeah! I was at the game last night with my brother. And at intermission, people flocked to the bar to watch Caitlin Clark in the Iowa game. Yeah, man. And I was like, I was we in. were sitting there, and I heard a ooh, and I was like, what? And I turned, everybody's watching the game, and I was like, oh, I didn't even know it was on. There Wait, we go. What an awesome thing, It's man. great. And it's coming to Cleveland, man. Get those bets in with Tipico, folks. It's going to be so great for all the tournament action. We'll get to NBA playoffs. Baseball is rocking. You are out of bet credits everywhere else. You've used them all up. You haven't signed. These are for new customers. Tipico code Fontana 100. F-O-N-T-A-N-A 100 when you sign up. Deposit and bet $25 on whatever you want. Get $100 in bonus bets to use all all the tournament, all the NBA action that you want, all the baseball. They got it for you. Typical. I got locks for this weekend, Ryan. Do you in NCAA? It's going UConn Purdue. Don't even think about it. Don't even don't yeah, likely. Don't even sniff it. And I know they're both near double digits, but 
just take those on out. You'll be just fine. Typico, use the code Fontana100 and rock with us all NBA playoff season long baseball season we got with our friends at Typico. All right, let's catch a break. Draft needs for the Browns. Chad Ryder listed five. There's yeah, one I, I have a adamant opposition to. Ooh. So we'll get to that coming up. Got some more Cavs. Get into the Browns. I'm sorry, Guardians. World Series tiers. I want to run through this because also the other teams. I want to see where they're at uh, coming out tomorrow. I think it was Bradford Doolittle that did this. Nice name. It was Bradford Doolittle. Yeah, oh, yeah. He's best. The yeah, he's great. There are five tiers, not crying tiers, like tiers. Five. Where were the Guardians at? I'll tell you next. It was Fontana's show right here on Big Play. Well, how do they know I'm doing this? Did somebody leak this out? It's social media. Oh. It's just, that's the way social media oh. works now. I thought maybe you were just running that yap, 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 yap. Welcome to Big Play, a sports media team that started back in 2014, and now we're not in a garage. Look at us, incorporating some of Cleveland's favorite sports personalities, bringing you fun and compelling content from downtown Cleveland. Coming to you live from the shores of Lake Erie in Burke Lakefront Airport, join Team Big Play for all the best sports talk in Ohio. Check us out on social media at Big Play, bringing you fun and compelling content from downtown Cleveland. Anthony Schlegel, just how physical he was. <laughs> you, know, you saw, you saw the, the girth and the power and everything he was bringing to the table, especially when he was a nice, beefy 255 playing middle linebacker. We were called soft last year. You don't want to be soft, especially when you come to the playoffs. So that's going to be a process throughout this season of establishing us as a harder team yeah. here in the How does an Ohioan build the perfect parlay? Who's got something? Big guys looking for long odds. The kids in Columbus are covering better than anyone. And at even odds. If it's even, I'm leaving. Listen, our championship DVD starts today. All right? Dude, I just got an invite to a Cincy playoff watch party. Shut up. Cincy, State, Cleveland, the perfect parlay. I'm a genius. For the best odds on Ohio sports, bet with your cojones. It is Spanish, dummy. Bet with typical sportsbook. I don't buy into this nonsense, this conspiracy nonsense that he's got his money and he's dogging it. He, that's ridiculous. All right, back here. Matt Fontana Show right here on Big Play. Follow us, Twitter, Matt Fontana Show. I'm at Matt Fontana 3 Ryan is at Ryan Tyler 33 We're up on YouTube, Twitch, all of it. Instagram, at Matt Fontana Show. Check us out there. You want to do football? You want to do baseball? Football. Let's do football. Here we go. NFL.com. Chad Ryder. Biggest needs for the Cleveland Browns. Now, he went through all 32 teams. Of course, we don't have a first-round pick. And Chad put five positions. It's a good number. Five positions that he said they were the biggest needs for the Cleveland Browns. He, I think he did five for every team. I'm okay. pretty sure it looks that way. So the one that I am adamantly against, maybe he just threw it in there because he had to. Yeah. I'm going to list out the positions. You tell me which one you think I'm adamantly against. Okay. Offensive tackle, linebacker, defensive tackle, Wide receiver and tight end. Which one would you guess that I'm vehemently against? Hmm. Hmm. Mm. Well, mm. Certainly, all right. Start with the ones you know I'm so not it's against. Certainly not wide receiver. It's not wide receiver. I don't. And the one was D tackle. Yeah. I don't think you'd be vehemently against D tackle, would you? You are. 
Why do you need another okay. one? Okay. I have. I, it's not offensive tackle. I think you should take an offensive lineman every year in the draft, to be honest with you. Linebacker, I'm on board with that. Tight end, I mean, okay, fine, great. D-tack, why? What, you don't need another one. You just signed Quentin Jefferson. You bring back Shelby Harris. You have Mo Hurst. Let's not forget about Dalvin Tomlinson. And why don't you just play your draft pick from last year that played all of, what, 10 snaps last year in Ika? Yeah. I don't need any more detail. And now, again, I understand that that was a big conversation topic going into free agency. You shored that up. And if Andrew Barry wants to just say, you know what? That is going to be my position of the one-year veteran deals. We call those the Andrew Barry specials. The one-year veteran deal. You just want to perpetuate that cycle every year. Just, we'll go after d We'll go after d yeah, that, That's fine. Don't draft another one. Please don't. That's, no. And I'm not talking about defensive end either. I'm always good, looking for a good pass rusher. So if you hear Tavondre Sweat's name get called, you're going to have an aneurysm? I really don't want it. I really don't. And especially with that position now, is wide receiver become that with Jerry Judy where you don't need that anymore? If we get this Cooper extension, which a lot of people, that's starting to get a little more smoke. That's getting a little more steam on this. If they want to sign Amari, if you sign Amari Cooper to an extension as well, then I'm all, I'm borderline taking wide receiver off for now. Unless your guy Lad is there. I will give you Lad. Yeah, McCarthy thank if he's you. There. That's fine. He ain't going to be you. there. He ain't going to be there, but that's okay. And then I'm opened up to, yeah, linebacker. And again, if it was a D-tack, sure, fine. Bro, you got guys that you just drafted that aren't playing. You got guys that you paid that have to play. I, I, I don't see D-tackle. I really don't. Here's Chad's write-up. Cleveland does not own its first or fourth round picks. They were the last of the selections headed to Houston for the Deshaun Watson trade. Injuries at offensive tackle suffered last season, and the 2025 free agency of Jedrick Wills should push the Browns to find depth at tackle as well as day three picks on the interior O-line and receiver and tight end. The team found one new starting linebacker in Jordan Hicks and added defensive tackle Quentin Jefferson in free agency, but they should add one more player at each position in the draft. And I guess I'm reading into, you're right, at 54, they take that. They could find me a D-tackle in the sixth round and, and whatever, throw them in there, that's all good and fine. The offensive line that Chad wrote about, that's a, a, a sneaky need. You know, because we know that Jed Wills is not going to be here beyond this year, or maybe it will be. I don't know. Don't write that off so quick, I guess. He has a solid year. What they do with Dewan Jones, Bill Callahan gone. I'm nervous. You got a lot. That went from being, what, one of the top two position groups in all of football on that offense. I'm sorry, offensive line groups in all of it was either you and the Eagles. People went back and forth. Yeah. Now you got Three of your guys coming off of injury. You lost Bill Callahan. You got to make these decisions on tackle. They got to figure out what they're doing with Dewan Jones. Do you keep him at right tackle? Do you slide him over to left? I thought about this. What if they said, we are moving Dewan Jones to left tackle, but we're going to give him a red shirt year to get ready for it. And then you're going to start Wills and Conklin. Those guys are paid. They're paid up. How that sits with Dewan Jones, I don't, you know, like you went in there and you played really well. That's a kick. It's you don't get to go back in there and start again. And if he's better than those other two, I don't know. We'll figure that out in training camp. So offensive line is not quite the need. The question continues to circle about 54, though. You trade back, take the best player available. What are you doing? I mean, the good news is it's wide open for Andrew Barry to, I guess, do kind of what he wants at this point. But bro, if they, I, I, I don't want to de tackle there. I really don't. I mean, I'm still fine with a receiver. I, I think, yeah, it was more of he had to pick five positions. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, trade down is happening. I know you want to trade up. I think the trade down is happening, and it's for a lot of the same reasons what we're discussing here. You don't necessarily need starters on this team. You need developmental guys. Find them in the third and fifth rounds. So stock up on some of those picks. I'm I, I'm preparing myself now for the trade down from 54. I, I mean, am. but I'm I'm not saying it's not going to work. But have we had a third later than third round pick that has developed? I in, mean, in the Andrew Barry's regime later than third. Like so, like MJ doesn't count because he was a saying. third round pick. That's what I'm saying. I don't um, think so. I'm I guess Dewan. I, I mean, I guess Dewan Jones. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, that's a, that's one, but a half of season, and he ended up being injured anyway. Um, 
I mean, more often than not, those guys don't. No, play. and that's like, you know, again, it comes back to how you view the draft. First round usually should be pro bowlers. Second to third round should be starters, average starters. Fourth and fifth round, potential starters. And then sixth and seventh are potential backup special teams guys. I mean, it's usually how it breaks down. You can go find me a Travis Kelsey in the third round. You can go find some guys late in the draft that kind of work out, sure. But the vast majority, the thing is, the Browns, if they had to play a football game tomorrow with the roster that they have, I feel confident in that. Yeah, absolutely. So the fact that you are short on some picks, and if you especially, well, it just weasels its way into the conversation. I don't mean this to be the way it just happens. That if you have to move on from Deshaun Watson, you're going to want draft picks as many as you can get for next year. And I'm not talking that you're getting a first-round pick or trading back in the second round. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about if you can get some future picks and you just get a stockpile, that then helps you make moves. I didn't want to bring it up. I didn't mean to bring it up. When did the two early 2025 mocks come out? I'm sure you can find one. I'm sure you could find some nut job that wants to do it with high school seniors at this point. I don't know. Walter football used to be really good for all of those. Oh, actually? Yeah. Okay. They used to have mocks like so early. Don't even Google that. What are you doing? Come on now. <laughs> Number one, Shador Sanders to the Titans. Oh, come on now. Carson Beck, two to the Giants. All court- Travis Hunter, three to the Patriots. I'm He'd be to fun to watch there. He'd be fun to watch there. Uh, Quinn Ewers, the Broncos at number eight. Oh, God. Oh, so I'll go J.J. McCarthy, Quinn Ewers in back-to-back years. That'll be fun. Yeah, and then, like, Drew Allar. Aller, yeah. 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 Aller? Is hey, it Aller? Aller, yeah. That's, Aller. that's all good. It's all good. Medina kid. I mean, that's, like, uh, for the future, when you think about that, you would have to figure it out. You'd have to have it, as many picks as you could get for the future of whatever that future might be. More is better. More is always better. So I, I'm preparing myself now for the trade back. Let's get over to baseball. Last night, Guardians, McKenzie just didn't have it, and it was pretty obvious, but the bats are still a little hot. A couple of home runs there. Julio Rodriguez is a freak. He is an absolute freak of nature. He is so fun to watch. I wish he was on my team. But anyway, Guardians was a tough one last night. That's fine. We'll get back in action tonight. So Bradford Doolittle, Ryan's new favorite name in the, of the day, Still not better than Lad McConkey. And they're up there. Five tiers of baseball teams. Number one, their time is now. These are the favorites to go win the World Series. Tier two, their time could be now. Tier three, so you're telling me there's a chance. That's got to be guards. Tier four, we will wait until next year. Oh, maybe. Tier five, we're at minimum two years away, okay. if even that. Okay. Let's find out where the guards are at. Tier one, front runners to win the league in the World Series. Only two teams, the Dodgers and the Braves. Tier two, their time could be now. These teams project to land the top seed, but could easily end up in the top tier by the end of the season. Houston Astros, Baltimore Orioles, Arizona Diamondbacks, the Yankees, the Phillies, the Rays, the Rangers, the Twins? Well, they're cause it's because they project them to win the AL Central. I know. They're not going to, though. Mm. Injuries. Mm. Sorry, I don't believe him. All right, Tier 3. So you're telling me we have a chance. The odds look stacked against these teams in terms of immediate title contention, but a playoff berth is in play. Seattle, Toronto, Chicago Cubs, St. Louis Cardinals, Boston Red Sox, San Diego Padres, and your Cleveland Guardians. And that's because they're in the Central, I would imagine. Here's the write-up from Bradford. Win average is 84 and a half games. Chance to make the playoffs is 47%. If you told the average Guardians fan that at least Bradford, but he's a statistical guy, that you have a 50-50 shot of making the playoffs, they'd call you crazy. 
does that not feel like it should be ten well, with some it, of the fans it, anyway? It, it, imagine if the Browns were in the AFC South or they were in the the, the, the uh, NFC South. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. That's basically what it is with the Guardians. They're in the worst division. So here's what Bradford did for every team: state of the franchise and a pivotal issue. Guardians. For the third straight season, the Guardians are starting with one of the youngest rosters in baseball. This formula got them a division crown, followed by a nice little postseason run in 2022, and then a slide back in 2023. You expect a young team to move forward, but this may simply be the reality of baseball as long as Cleveland shies away from bolstering with a veteran impact player or two. They don't spend money. Got it. The pivotal issue facing the Guardians. If you had to guess what you think the pivotal issue is for the guards. Well, I, when was this written? Like, I think this morning. I mean, they, I don't think they can project these the bats to stay hot. Like, I think they're going to project a lull. Is it, is Not it that so production? much. What's the biggest thing about is it just youth? No. What's everybody talk about with the Guardians? What's the impending thing that everybody freaks out about? They don't spend money? Trading sheet. Trading, okay. It's, it's starting pitching. Yeah. Pivotal issue. The rotation has the potential to be one of baseball's strongest, but they also have various components that they need to be locked in at the same time. A return to health for Shane Bieber helps, but they need Logan Allen, Tanner Bybee to continue to progress, and Tristan McKenzie more of 2022 than 2023, and for Gavin Williams to get and stay healthy. Team's defense and bullpen are well-situated to complement a quality rotation, but this unit needs to hold up their end of the bargain. What's that quality like bullpen. All right, all right. Is that an Eli Morgan eye roll? No, hey, here's the thing. I defend Eli Moore. I like Eli Morgan. I do. I'm not going to crap on Trevor Steffen anymore, okay? He's got Tommy John. He's done. There's no point in throwing it on that. They're going to get Sam Hench's back soon. You know, Barlow's had, what, one appearance. Class A is still really good. I really like that Cade Smith kid. And that Tim Heron. Both those guys throw gas. Just throw them out there and throw 96 for an inning. Get out of there. That's it. How does Tim Heron not like the best reliever in baseball? He's a lefty that gets it up near 100. Shouldn't he be the best pitcher in baseball? That's a Raldis Chapman level. I was about to say, well, I don't know. Something. Still got to throw strikes. I, that's true, too. And if, you're, if your fastball is straight, you're going to get slammed. Yeah. You are going to get and slammed. It don't matter how yeah. fast you throw. So would you, I mean, obviously you agree with that, right? That we're in this, in this, it could be. It. I was, I was happy to hear that like they you're were saying we have three. a chance. I, I would have said two or three. I was happy that they didn't put them in the bottom at tier four. You want to run through the other tiers real quick just to see where we're at? Yeah. This is waiting until next year. The Giants, the Mets, not funny, the Tigers, the Reds, the Marlins, the Brewers, the Royals, the Pirates, the Angels. Those are all waiting for next year. These are the bottom barrel teams. Bradford writes, there's work, work to be done, and they have a long road ahead. The White Sox. That's the, so you're about to name three more AL Central. Uh, I, don't, I haven't heard you say Detroit yet, and I know Royals and White Sox. Did I not put basement. Detroit a year away? Maybe they're in here. They got to be. Chicago, Oakland, Nationals, Rockies. No, they had to have been in the other one. They had to have been in the other one. Uh, the Royals and the Tigers are in Tier 4, waiting until next year. The Royals and the Tigers. Oh, okay. More the Royals than the Tigers? Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, they got some young guys there with the Tigers that they like. And the White Sox are just unmitigated. I mean, Tigers trash. are 4-0. No. Yeah. I mean, this at this point of the year, like... I know, it's like... Oh, yeah. the Yankees are on. Okay, great. That's all. You know, and the, I, the Guardians have gotten off to a strong start. I'm happy to see that it's the Bats, right? Yeah. Last night, maybe put too much on Tristan McKenzie. All right. Got it. Barely pitch at all last year. Mechanics were off. Control was an issue. If we can just keep hitting... You got home runs from what? Naylor and uh, Freeman, Freeman last night. Yeah. I'm okay with Freeman. He's throwing guys out. Yeah. Look at that. Two guys. If you can hit in behalf of what Miles Straw was. Scott field, Service man. better sit Julio Rodriguez. Today. That guy blew. And now, granted, they won. But you blow through your third base coach stop sign. That was pretty apparent. That gets you a benching the next day, usually. But I, 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 I the Guardians are off to a good start. They're off to a really good start, and I'm happy that the bats are showing up. And if you get your pitching where you should, like tonight, Bieber, Castillo, that's going to be a good game tonight. Yeah. I'm excited for that. Are we back to a 940 tip? I guess we'll get the guard. I guess we'll get the Cavs. Oh, no. Cavs are out there, too. Man, it's going to be a late night. I got a 9 o'clock Cavs tip and a 940 Guardians Mariners. I'm going to take a nap before that. Seattle is back to being the favorite in this one. Oh, really? It was about even money. It was about even money all, or up until game time. And even after the first inning, I don't think anybody scored. But um, 
yeah, I mean, the thing is, I look at it and I say, we're in it. It's a good start to the season. Keep the bats rolling and see where it plays out. Ryan, please bring up our Twitter question for you, Kian, this morning. Yeah. Our question, we're talking about Brian, K- uh, Brian Casey, the, the city council, McCann Mothers, Art Modell rule and all that kind of stuff. Here's the funny thing. If there was a rule named after me, what would it be? Mike tweets, do you know about my Crock-Pot story? I got food poisoning from a Crock-Pot one time. Was he a bad cook? Or? I did. I, apparently, these things should probably not be put together. I did chicken eggplant parmesan. And I'm assuming the chicken was you know, it was raw when I put it in, and then I put the eggplant on top of it. I'm assuming it sucked into the eggplant. I got violently oh, sick from that. Ew. I love my crock pot. I cook I it, it all the time. I have a deathly fear of eating raw meat. Like, my wife and I get our like we go back and forth on that because I overcook. Every, I've got to think I do about too chicken. because I'm scared. I've got to think I'm about chicken. She, she gets me I all would the rather time eat a little chicken. burnt than risk because well, chicken you can't mess around with. That's my thing. Raw, like even ground meat, yeah. does not freak me out yeah, the way no, chicken no, freaks chicken, me out. There's something, me. and I, I thankfully have found an excellent way to cook chicken. You got a cast iron skillet. You don't have one. Get one. They're great. You start your chicken in the cast iron. You just sear both sides of it quick and then throw it in the oven. Oh, yeah. So you lock everything in, and then you bake it in the oven. It's great. I also found an amazing fried chicken cutlet air fryer recipe. Mm, air, I love air fryer. So you got to cut them thin, right? Here's what you do. You want to know your little secret. You want good fried chicken next time? Sure. You got to put a little cornstarch in your flour. Okay. Game changer. You need a big play cooking show. We could rock that. I guess we, we have the dude network. We have network. a lot. We have the dude network. Yeah, we got the dude network. He does it all. Yeah, you're right. We got the dude network. We got video games coming up. We are cooking. We got it all for you here in Big Play. Throw a little cornstarch in your flour the next time you do it. So I do. So here's what I do. Chicken, flour, eggs, breading. Spray not only your air fryer basket. Because here's the other misnomer about the air fryer. People think, oh, I don't use any oil. No, no, no. The whole point of the air fryer is that you use less oil than dropping it in a deep fryer. You still got to spray your basket. Then spray the chicken. With that spray olive oil, 15 minutes. Mm. 15 minutes at about 400. Thank me later. How we start talking about this? Um, You got sick chicken. Oh, pot. the rule that it would be my rule. That probably, yeah. That's what Mike tweeted me that earlier. I appreciate that, Mike. I don't know what else my rule would be. I'm not really known for much. <laughs> kind of sad, I guess, that, that we're at. Brian Casey brought up this art modal rule. As silly as the rule sounds, I appreciate what he's trying to do. The ultimate question remains, would you, the taxpayers of Cuyahoga County, the city of Cleveland, would you be okay with your tax dollars going towards the facility? Ryan, our votes and some responses, please. Already, will 70% say no, they wouldn't mind, and 30% say yes. Charles on Twitter slash X. Team Dome, don't care where the money comes from. Just do me a favor and look outside. Now go sit in it for three hours straight. Pat. Okay. Yes and no. Yes, because Jimmy has proven to be shady, and I don't trust him. No, because it would benefit the city. Andrew, it seems tax dollars have been spent with disregard for a long time, so why not allow the taxpayers to actually enjoy what their money's spent on? Michael, the owner's worth billions, yet you have to foot the bill. Why? Why would you support that? Yeah, I mean, here's okay, so here's the thing. The, 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 I'm, I'm talking about the Haslam comment there. Yes, whatever you know, what Jimmy allegedly did or didn't do with Pile Flying J, Salt, Warren Buffett, whatever. whatever I, I, I really don't care. It is what it is. Okay, fine. The thing is, the facility, I don't see the Haslam family not owning the Cleveland Browns for a long time. Okay. They have a succession plan in place. Their son in law, J.W. Johnson, assuming that he will step up in that role one I day. I know he's their son in law. Yeah, they have daughters. They have three daughters. So D has a son, I think, from a previous relationship, and then they have three daughters uh, on their own, and J.W. is their son in law. Do they have any single granddaughters? I don't think so. I think they're, I've seen the Haslam's grandkids. They're like kids, they're little, little, little kids. No, Josh. You got to go yeah. get that uh, Clark Hunt's daughter. Yeah. You got to go, yeah. She seemed, what, what's her first name? I don't even know. I don't know. Maybe she'll audition for the Josh Kirby show with me. being. The How's bachelor. that going, by the way? I don't know. I'll find out today. Oh, you today. haven't started that yet. They'll give me an update today, I think. Uh, Gracie. Gracie Hunt. She is, I wonder how old she is. Who is Gracie Hunt? Daughter of Kansas City owner Clark Hunt. I mean, he's only 59, so she can't yeah, be Yeah, she that can't old. be that old. 25. Right in your wheelhouse, buddy. Yeah. Right in your wheelhouse, Two-year buddy. Two-year difference. What? That's fine. 
That's fine. Right in your wheelhouse. Somebody tweet at her. Get her on the show with uh, those guys. Um, uh, <laughs> wouldn't that be something? <clears throat> Jeez, oh man, wouldn't that be something? All the insight Jeez. you'd have all you would have all of the insight Jeez. that we would ever need. She's a fine looking lady, I will uh, say. There that. you go. All right, back to this. Uh, back to the Haslam's panel. So they're not going to not own this team for a long time. So uh, that is another reason. That's actually a sign of positivity because they're in this for the long haul. I believe them when they say that. You don't see NFL teams come up for sale unless you had what happened with Dan Snyder or you had what happened with the Broncos where the family just couldn't get their stuff together, didn't maybe want the team anymore, and they're moving on. How long have the Fords owned the Lions, right? How long have the Rooney family owned this? The teams do not come for sale. So there is a succession plan in place for the Haslams. They're not, getting, they're not going to, That is a good thing for us. Because could you imagine what this storm would be as if they were trying to sell the team or if there was a chance that they were going to leave? They are building the stadium because they plan to own the team for the next 30 to 50 years. Maybe I'm putting too much on that. That stadium, when they build this stadium, you would imagine that you are going to get the same run out of it that you would get for the stadium that you're in right now, at least 25 years. I feel pretty confident in saying, outside of something extremely scandalous, which I guess could happen, you never know, that the Haslams will be the owners for that majority of that time. And that's good because then they have that true ownership of it, the stewardness of the franchise to do the best and put the best facility out there and get all that stuff done. That's the goal. That's what you want to have. You don't want this up in arms stuff about what this team is doing, this ownership, if they can move the team, if they're going to go here. In relative, we're talking about the team moving, what, 20 miles away, if that. They're not leaving Northeast Ohio. Now, again, I want them on the lakefront. I want them to stay down there. I think the city of Cleveland wants that. And I just get the little itch. I think the Hasms want that too. It doesn't mean that that's what's going to happen. They still have to negotiate and figure all this out. But if we could just start, and I'll come in on the negotiation, they need me. If we just sit down with Mayor Bibb, a few of his people, the Haslams, and a few of their people, and they sit on opposite sides of the room, aren't you supposed to sit in a circle? Isn't that more conducive to, to, to positivity and positive thoughts? Everybody sit in a circle. And I will start the proceedings by saying, to this side and this side, you don't need to Nod your head. You don't need to raise your hand. You don't need to say anything. But I just want you to internalize this. Would we all believe we want the Browns to stay in Cleveland and play on the lakefront? Answer that question to yourselves. I would imagine that I'll say yes. And I go, let's just start from there. And let's work on it. Let's find a way. Let's work on this. They can talk about parking. They can talk about infrastructure. What can the city do? What can the Browns do? And we'll get that figured out. Start with that. Start with that. I know that... Well, I believe that is, the, that is the, the point of the city of Cleveland. I had somebody tell me that the city of Cleveland actually wants them to leave because then they would have the opportunity to develop that lakefront. Yeah, we've heard that. And I you. go, they actually don't want that. Do you want to know why? Because when it fails and it's an epic disaster, then they're going to say you let them leave for nothing. I've lived here my whole life. I have no faith or belief anymore. On any lakefront development. Do we have some renderings we can look at? Nothing. Not that. It's like, what, what are you going to do? Put a park there? We, we, we gonna bulldoze? The, I don't know. Maybe they have a grandioso idea. I've got no faith. I have no faith, no clue. No belief they're going to do anything with it. So if you're not going to do that, you might as well keep them around. It's a convenient excuse, is it not? Oh, you know, I'd really love to do the lakefront, but the Browns are there. You know, what are we going to do? I think that's bailing the city of Cleveland out. Because if they left, and then they put up a couple of restaurants that would end up closing in a year and a half anyway. Mega Hooters. And you got nothing sitting there but Ryan's Mega Hooters. <laughs> catching Lisa Ann on Tuesday appearances. <laughs> then what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Move them to Brook Park. Move them to Brook Park. There it is. You have your Flacco statue down there. Yeah. You have your Mega Hooters and your Flacco statue. What more do you need? Sizzler? R.I.P., by the way. Donald from Happy Gilmore passed away. Uh. That's a tough one, man. Joe Flaherty was his name. That's sad. Matt, real quick, any guesses on the top five longest tenured NFL owners? Like what franchise? Oh, that's a pretty good one. Okay. Um, you know number one. The Roonies. No. Oh. Because we've talked about it. Longest tenured? Yeah. The Fords? No. She's 100 years old. What do you mean? 
Wait, oh, are you talking about one person? Like the, a family has owned a franchise. Oh, yeah, and it's not the Fords. No. Oh. Um. Uh, we've mentioned her on the show before. We have. Yeah. Um. I don't know. The DeBartolos? The Bears. Oh, oh, the McCa- Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. She is legitimately like yeah. over a hundred. Okay, number she's... two is technically the Packers, but that doesn't count because that doesn't pub- count because they're publicly saying. owned. Owned number three, the the New York Giants, the Tish families, the Tish, yeah, Mara's, uh, yeah. four Cardinals, the Bidwell family, really, and number five is the Rooney family, okay. the Steelers. How long have the Fords owned the, the the Lions? Clearly not as long. Hang on. I guess the franchise has been under the ownership of the famous Ford family since just 1963. Hmm. 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 All right. Haslam's are what, 11? Yeah, I think they took it in 11 or 12. Like right before the season, I think in 12. I think that's when it was. Uh, and then you have the new ownership groups. Obviously, you have uh, Josh Harris. You've got, got the, the Broncos. Um. God, who was? How wouldn't it Stan Kroenke join? Stan Kroenke. When did he buy the Rams? Twenty ten. That's right. He became the full owner by unanimous consent on twenty ten, because then they moved him on. Dude, is this not insane? Stan Kroenke owns the Nuggets, the Avalanche, the Rams. The Colorado Mammoth and Rapids in the National Lacrosse League. I'm sorry, National Lacrosse League, Colorado Mammoth, the National Soccer League Rapids, and the Colorado Crush of the Arena League. Now, how do you even manage all that? I, he's got a lot of people that works for him. Man. Yeah, I mean, oh, and yeah. he bought Arsenal. He bought Arsenal, and he owns a Call of Duty team. I forgot about. What's that, that dude's net worth? Stan Kroenke. Yeah, Jesus. Mm. In Kroenke net 16 bill. Okay. 16 bill. That's a lot of stuff for 16 billion. Jerry Jones 13.9. Kraft 11.1. Now, here's the other thing you got to remember that includes their NFL teams. Yeah. Like Jerry Jones only owns, or not only owns, like I know he's got other business ventures and stuff like that, but a big chunk of what he That's owns is the of, fact yeah. that he owns the Dallas Cowboys. It's not like he's got that liquid cash. You'd have to sell the team. If that's what he was really worth. Did he marry the. Oh, that's what it was. She married Ann Walton Cronkey. And she is from the Walmart Waltons. Mm. She is an mm. American billionaire. Heiress to the Walt, uh, the Walmart fortune. Ann and her sister, Nancy Walton, inherited their stock from their father, Bud Walton, who was the brother and early business partner of Sam Walton, who started Sam's Club and Walmart. Do you know what U.S. state was the first Walmart? I'm almost positive I know this. I'm just going to double check. The first Walmart. I want to say it's like Kansas or something like that. Yeah, I was right. Well, well not Kansas, but very close. Yeah, it's, it's like a, I don't know, Iowa. Arkansas. 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 Oh, there you go. Oh, I got it. You were, I was not geographically close. I was close in the name. Got it there. All right. We don't have a billion dollars like all these people are talking about. When we come back, if I had a billion dollars, I'd pay for the stadium. That's fine. Would I really? Yeah. Know? What would be your first? Hey, I, what didn't would check be your... my, I didn't check my Powerball. Did anybody win last night? It's a bill. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. It's a bill. What would be your first thing if you bought the Browns? Like, what would be the first thing you do? That's a great question. That is a great question. I mean, if it really came down to, like, you need to fix the stadium, then that is priority number one. If there was a tangible thing that I would change, probably the dog pound. I don't like how that dog pound looks right now. I don't like the caricature, like, wall type, you know, the fence kind of thing. Yeah. Um, They're bringing the white face mask back. That's great. I'm excited for that. The jerseys are fine. The color scheme is fine. That's a good one. What would I change about the Browns? If I if I just bought the team, what would I change? That should be a really good question. Probably the facility. Like, there's a lot of... I, I, I'm trying to think of something better. Like, I'm trying to think of a great answer or something like that. Change the name. Oh. I, I'm not opposed to it. I just... You got to give me a better name than the Guardians. I'm starting to fade. I couldn't imagine the Browns being getting their name changed. A lot of people don't like the name. They think it's a stupid name. 
Memed not much you can do with it. Named after a guy. I know, but I'm just saying it's legacy. I, I, I'm not for changing it, but that's just me. All right, let's catch our break. We'll get to time up coming up. We got the morning update with Ryan. A lot of stories we got to get to. The women's final four set. Men ready to go for the weekend. Got it all. Morning update comes your way next. Well, how do they know I'm doing this? Did somebody leak this out? It's social media. Oh. It's just, that's the way social media oh. works now. I thought maybe you were just running that yep, 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 yep. Welcome to Big Play, a sports media team that started back in 2014, and now we're not in a garage. Look at us, incorporating some of Cleveland's favorite sports personalities, bringing you fun and compelling content from downtown Cleveland. Coming to you live from the shores of Lake Erie in Burke Lakefront Airport, join Team Big Play for all the best sports talk in Ohio. Check us out on social media at Big Play, bringing you fun and compelling content from downtown Cleveland. Anthony Schlegel, just how physical he was. <laughs> you, know, you saw, you saw the, the girth and the power and everything he was bringing to the table, especially when he was a nice, beefy 255 playing middle linebacker. We were called soft last year. You don't want to be soft, especially when you come to the playoffs. So that's going to be a process throughout this season of establishing us as a harder team you know, here in the How does an Ohioan build the perfect parlay? Who's got something? Big guys looking for long odds. The kids in Columbus are covering better than anyone. And at even odds. If it's even, I'm leaving. Listen, our championship DVD starts today. All right? Dude, I just got an invite to a Cincy playoff watch party. Shut up. Cincy, State, Cleveland, the perfect parlay. I'm a genius. For the best odds on Ohio sports, bet with your cojones. It is Spanish, dummy. Bet with typical sportsbook. I don't buy into this nonsense, this conspiracy nonsense that he's got his money and he's dogging it. He, that's ridiculous. Let's get to a morning update. Ryan's got the stories. Women find a four set. Other plenty of news to get to. Ryan, just take it away. All right, Matt. Well, the Guardians fall to three and two on the young yeah. season as they drop the first one out west in Seattle, Matt. Not a bad show. Well, I guess kind of a bad showing for Tristan McKenzie, but he hasn't pitched in a while there. But uh, like I mentioned, a very, very young season. Dominic Canzone, a hometown guy, went to Walsh, hit a home run. I off saw the that. Guardians. Hammy. Hammy had a great call for that. Uh, talking about a kid from Walsh who grew up rooting for the you know Cleveland baseball team to, to be able to hit that. I thought that was pretty cool. So, yeah, I mean, listen, McKenzie just didn't have it. Control was kind of the issue last night. Bats, you know, you had that pivotal time. They scored a bunch of runs. You came back and scored a couple. I'm like, all right, try to make this a game a little bit. But McKenzie just didn't have it. More time. The thing is, I'm a little worried. You had to stretch your bullpen out again a little last night. So you're going to need a good start tonight from Shane Bieber uh, to get rolling with that. I expect that out of him. Keep it hot going. You got an ace matchup tonight with Castilla and Bieber. I'm excited for that. It's going to be a good game. Already, Matt, well, the Cavs are back in action tonight as they take on the Utah Jazz. And we have a little big play boost here. We'll get to it later in the show, Matt. But one, they feel like they really need to pick up here if they want to remain high in that Eastern Conference standing. They do. These are must-win games. I feel, I hate to say this because you know how it works. And it's. Just, I think they're going to smoke the Jazz. This needs to be like take the anger out game. I know they're angry. I know Donovan Mitchell is upset. I want to talk about that later in the show, too. He is getting the sense and the vibe that we all are feeling like, it's it's here's the thing it's not 
you're not in a bad place yet, but you're on that track. You get what I'm saying? Like all signs are pointing to the wheels about to fall off. You better fix it. You have a chance. They're not screwed yet. They're not in the bad place yet, but they're they're staring down the barrel on it. They really are. So with all that being said, just go out there and just blow out the Jazz tonight. It's, it's what is it, 10 and a half or is it 11, 11, and, 11 and a half? Just smoke them, get back on track, win a couple of these other tough games coming up, and you'll feel right. That's it. That's all I'm asking for this team right now. Just get it done. You should have no problem beating the Jack. God, Knock on wood, God, 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 come on now. You should have no problem beating them. I think they're going to cover. Just get a, You need a feel-right, get-right game tonight for the Cavs, and I think they'll get it. Jazz should be that opportunity. All right, well, the Cavs are two spots down in the latest CBS NBA Power Rankings, Matt. They're sitting here at 16. Notable teams above them are the Pacers at number 12, the Knicks at number 11, and the yeah. Magic at number 10. Magic, everybody's on the matter anymore, man. I'm telling you, and that's the thing. Like, you look at their roster, like Paolo Bancaro with how good he is, Cole Anthony, I'm a big fan of his, like, they're a young and upcoming team. You feel like you're going to have to deal with them a little bit. How about this, Matt? Yeah. Celtics dropped to number two. The Thunder are number one. That has to be like the first time all year that that is. They just need the clicks. The the, the <laughs> Celtics are, and I, I'm not, I don't mean to sound correct, but it's like the Celtics are the best team in basketball. You know that. I know that. Now, are the Thunder, do would I want to face them if I was a Celtics fan? I don't know. Would you really want to face the Nuggets? I don't know, but it's like, Thunder a little scrappy. Your boy Chet. Did you not call that? You said Chet was going to win Rookie of the Year? I did, but I think it's, it's not going to happen. Do you think it's back to Webby? It's, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yo, when you put up 40, you do 40 and 20. 40 there. and 20. Yeah, He's I, a freak. Yeah, yeah, but I it, did say that. It was it Chet, Chet for a little while. Now I think it's back to Webby and Yama. Um, but yeah, I mean, sure. You want to buy the Thunder. I'm sure I'm having a great old run with it right now. I just, you want to know the thing about the Thunder? I, and I guess it's working. I cannot stop staring at their patch for Love's truck stops. It tells oh, me I haven't even noticed that. Dude, it's because they wear the blue and it's a yellow patch. It just... The Cavs one is tasteful with Goodyear. Look at oh, that wow. damn thing, right? Yeah, Do you pull that up for the people if they haven't seen it? Look at that damn thing. I, I seriously, I can't not stare at it. Because it's so con like contrasting colors. It's blue and yellow. And again, it works. I know it's Love's. I know it's Love's truck stop. I know that. The Cavs I know is Goodyear just because it's the Cavs. I hope it's Goodyear, right? Is it Goodyear? Here, I'm talking like I know what it is. The patch is up there for the people. Cavs patch. It looks like a... Like McDonald's colors there on the screen. Cavs sponsor. Is it Cliffs? Oh my god, it might be Cliffs. Who's on the Cavs uniform? It's not good here anymore? I thought it was. It's Cliffs. I'm sorry, it's Cliffs. I knew that. I knew it switched to Cliffs. But again, I knew it was Loves. Because you look at it on the screen right there. It just, it, it's gaudy. It's like you can't not stare at it when I see the thunder. It's the first thing I notice. Now it's in my head. Now I, I see Chet and I see Shy and I'm like, I oh, love truck stops. There you go. All right. There we go. I should say direct competitor to Pilot Flying J over there. Sorry, Jimmy. But um, I, the thunder are not better than the Celtics. They might be like today from these rankings, but they won't be when it's all said and done. Are we putting too much on that we just think the Celtics are just going to walk to the NBA Finals through the East? I mean, they're clear by far, not even close. I think the best team in the East. Now, it's a question yeah. when you get to the championship, obviously, because they're yet to get it done, which is the stink on Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Sure. But they are two very young players, and I think if they're going to get it done, this is a year that they definitely should. Yeah. Already, Matt, well, speaking of basketball, the Final Four is set for the women's, yes. and they're coming to Cleveland. Yeah, Caitlin excited. Clark gets her revenge against Angel Reese and the LSU Tigers, and Paige Beckers defeats Juju Watkins and the Trojans, and now our Final Another Four is coming. Another ho 40 for Caitlin Clark. I mean, that was a close game. I mean, granted, it was only an eight, what is it, seven-point game at the end, but there was a point that Iowa got out to a little bit of a lead there, which was fun. UConn with the big win there. I know Juju uh, It would have been nice to see. At the end of the day, and somebody sent this tweet yesterday, regardless if it was LSU, LSU or Iowa, regardless of his UConn or USC, is going to work out well for the city of Cleveland. That being said, I'm happy that Iowa advanced. Again, 
Kim Mulkey and Angel Reese in that crew, that would have been fun to watch, but you get Caitlin Clark here. Bro, you told me about this morning. Ticket prices, man. You can get to the Final Four on the men's side for about $500, cheapest tickets. Cheapest tickets for the women's, over $900. Evolution. Well, the other thing is availability. They're playing at a football arena or football stadium. They're at Rocket Mortgage Field. That's a little bit different, but I still love to see it. And I do want everybody to mention, you know how crazy this weekend's about to be? I know. We got the millions of people coming for the eclipse. Oh, I didn't think about that. That's on Monday. Monday. That's on Monday. It's Monday. Yeah. Monday. And then you got the women's is championships that being Friday. No, there, no, no, no. I'm not saying I'm not saying the sense of the eclipse being overblown. I'm saying is it no getting, the people. Yeah, I'm telling you, you're not. No, you think it's really going to be that. Lorraine County crowded. said they are already expecting millions of people to show up. So there's really people that travel across the country. There to see are this. people coming internationally. I've heard they are flying in because for those that don't know, apparently we are in the direct path of Bonus this eclipse. On a weekend, you know, people could stay. Well, not okay. Here's the other thing. There's a sensationalism that happens with our society where the eclipse has been on the news and it's been brought up on this and then it just spawns so many things. There are conspiracy theorists that think it's going to take out a grid or it's going to knock the internet out or whatever. The thing is, it's been so sensationalized that there are people that feel like they cannot live their lives the rest of their life without being in Noreen, Ohio to see the eclipse. That's outrageous. Are you going to walk around and tell people, you know, I saw the eclipse at the best place possible. Are you going to get a t-shirt? So like, like, that's what I'm saying. Can there, you, can, I mean, obviously I'm sure like NASA has the ability to do this and whatnot, but the average person, you can't take a video of it. They said do not. So what a lot of people are saying, if you're going to videotape it, put the glasses over your phone. There's something about the. It would mess up your phone. I don't know. I have to, no to actually be able to get a picture of it. I guess I don't oh, know. Right, I have yeah. no idea. Do you want to know my other thing? My mom got us eclipse glasses. Right? Are they legit? Like I, I'm not like making. Like, I'm telling like, you right now. You know, I'm like not my mom got them at a store. I believe that the <laughs> store tells me. How the hell do I know? I'm not messing around with that. I watch it on TV. Oh no, I'm gonna go look at it. The other thing, I I'm just gonna get a <laughs> welding helmet for my dad. My dad's got a bunch of welding helmets yeah. in our garage. Can you bring to the studio? A welding helmet? So I sure. Can use it? Yeah. Yeah. We got a couple. So, I, I again, my mom bought these uh, Eclipse glasses at the store. Are they, like, are they, F you know what I mean? Like, when you grab a toothbrush, you know that the American Dental Association, go back to Home Alone, is this toothbrush ADA, uh, American Dental Association approved? Are these Eclipse glasses NASA approved? I j I'm not, because my thing is, I, my son. Yeah. I'm going to put these on my kid. <laughs> you can't be messing around with And that. I'm not messing with that. I don't want to lose my eyesight either. But, like, are these glasses legit? Or did some jack wagon take some saran wrap and put them inside of a, pla a, a, a cardboard pair of glasses and go, yeah, these are Clips glasses. Good luck. Have Matt, fun. Not to derail before we get to the Immaculate Clip, yeah. Matt, but Matt, would you, if, 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 would you go blind? Take your kids out because I know you wouldn't want to do it because yeah. you had kids. You wouldn't want to want to go blind. But if you were just, like, single, whatever, would you go blind if it meant you could turn into Daredevil? No, probably not. No? Daredevil's cool, but he would not be the superhero I'd want to be. So but if you had a chance to be a superhero. Okay, but here's the other thing. It's not worth your vision. You ever thought about this? What happens when Daredevil turns 65 and he's not quite as agile anymore? But he's Daredevil. I'm sure he's going to I know. be agile then. I mean, I Mike know. Tyson's still getting in the ring. I guess. I'm out. No, no. Daredevil, I'd rather get bit by a spider and become Spider-Man. Well, I didn't give you that option, did I? Well, no, but to your answer your question, if I would... If I would Splash chemicals in my eye to become Daredevil? I would not. I'd rather get bit by a radioactive spider. The Flash? I don't know. I think the Flash is kind of lame. What? Like, go super fast. Because, again, I'm thinking about normal people turned into... You know, it's not like Superman. It's not Batman. Yeah. It's they had something bite them or something yeah. happened to them. Who got struck by the lightning? That was Flash. No, no, I know, but there's somebody else. Shazam? Well, yeah, he got the power of the gods. There's somebody else I'm trying to think of. It's probably Marvel. It's gotta be somebody in Marvel. I got struck by lightning. Yeah. And you're, it's not the you're not thinking. No, the Flash? I, I I mean I, I know it is the Flash, but I'm thinking of somebody else. Superhero that was struck by lightning. Like Wally West, like another. Yeah, no, Flash? It, it, it's somebody else. It's not Captain Marvel. Oh, oh, I'm thinking of Electro. The bad guy in Spider-Man. That's who I'm thinking of. Jamie Foxx. Oh, well, in the that, movie, in that one movie, he yeah. like fell into that like reactor. Right. Oh, I guess if I really... Uh, would you pick Mr. Freeze? You gotta live in the suit the rest of your life, but you fall into a vat of chemicals. Yeah, well, do I, do, have do, to, do I have to have his whole lore? Like, is, did I do it for my dying wife? Yes, yes. You get all of it. 
No, I don't want to. You, do you don't want to do that? No, I never get to see my wife again. Two Face get burned by acid. Would you take that? No, because he's just weird. No, he you know, he's just like a psycho. Yeah, absolutely not. Uh, Clayface. Would be Clayface. I was just gonna say because he's all up in Batman Poison too. Ivy would be kind of cool. Yeah, Poison Ivy would be pretty cool. Uh, Superman. All of his characters are like outer space type stuff. Lobo would be cool. Yeah, I miss that. I'm so pissed they didn't make that movie. Whatever. What about Marvel? What are all the Marvel bad guys? The Marvel bad guys? Oh, oh! Would you become the Green Goblin? No. You just gotta suck that gas in. You're telling me you wouldn't want to become the Green Goblin like on a sabbatical. <laughs> <laughs> I started this company. You can't do this to me. I started this company. <laughs> I just figured. Out. I'm somewhat of a scientist myself. <laughs> the meme. Would people use that meme? Reflog put out everybody on oh Monday morning God. when the bra- I'm I'm uh, oh my. I'm somewhat of a I'm a somewhat of a bracketologist <laughs> myself. What was the other one with him? Norman's on a sabbatical. Well, when, no, when, it's something about when he looks at Spider- There's another meme. There's another Green Goblin meme. When he's looking at Spider-Man. Shout out Willem Dafoe. Oh, yeah. He's the best. Uh, yeah, some... Oh, man. Yeah, I'm somewhat of a scientist myself. <laughs> That's the best one. That's I so started this company. Yeah, you can't do this to you me. You can't do this to me. Yeah, yeah. Green Goblins. I like the Hobgoblin a little more myself because a little more orange in there, but Green Goblin's where it's at. What if we did Marvel characters in the Immaculate Grid? Wouldn't that be fun? That'd be so easy. That'd be so play. easy to do. Let's see if this one's going to be easy. Immaculate Grid, here we go. You're going to love this, Matt. All right, good. The bottom one's South Carolina. <laughs> they went to USC. That's oh, not, I mean, Southern California. Southern California. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Southern USC. California, USC. All right, we're getting some college. Up and down, left and right. What's our statistical category? 3,000 yards passing in a season. Crap. No, we got this. Because, all right, Jets, oh, USC. Hold on. Go. Jets USC, we can just rip Sam Darnold. Well, do we need him? Can you? Oh, Carson Palmer. Yeah, yeah. Okay, go. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, go. No, 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 no. Sam Darnold. I'm thinking. I'm thinking way ahead. Stupid. Rip Sam Darnold. Barry Sanders. Uh, yeah. Okay. Wait, didn't he go to Oklahoma State? Oh yeah. Wait, who am I thinking of? Reggie Bush. Reggie Bush. Did he play there? Oh, I don't know. Reggie Bush to Detroit? Uh, maybe not. He know. got drafted by the Saints, bro. <laughs> maybe I'm tripping. I All right, go that. passing yards. Go Carson Palmer. Did he go oh, wait. Yeah, Carson Palmer? Right. Now, wait, 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 wait. Let me see Raiders, because Carson Palmer might work for the Raiders. Okay, maybe not. I just don't know any of the other SC quarterbacks. Like, I, I don't think Matt Leinart ever did it. You know. All right, yeah. just, 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 uh, just rip Carson Palmer. Oh, good thing you saved my Barry Sanders. I, I, say, Barry Sanders I mixed didn't him up go with there. Reggie Bush. Yeah. That's exactly what I did. Um, yeah. Um, SC Lions. So I'm just trying to think of draft picks. Yeah, I know. Um, man, that's going to be tough. I know. It's going to be hard. I mean, just let's just start naming every USC player we can think of. Well, yeah. Again, I don't. I don't know if Matt Leinart ever went there. Like Reggie Bush. Um, I don't know many USC players. To be honest. With well, you. no. I, everybody I keep thinking of, they all went to other schools. Michael, like Michael Pittman, Michael Crabtree didn't go there. He went to Texas Tech. Um, Taylor Mays. Remember him, the safety. He went to Cincinnati. I don't ever know if you're ever. Right, we'll just maybe have to go back. To All it. right, we'll have to go back to it. All right, uh, 2,000 passing yard season. Uh, you can just go Derek Carr and Eli Manning. All right. Um, oh, uh, uh, Jets Giants Leonard Williams. Giants Lions. Oh my god. Oh. Mm. I feel like there's a there's an easy layup here that we're missing. Because it's the blue and it's throwing me off because they got the same colors. There's a running back. I know there is. And I can't think of one. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. I know exactly who it is. Ty something. Not Ty Montgomery. 
Yes. Oh, is it Ty Montgomery? Are you sure? I'm almost positive. All right. I know you play for the for the Packers. If you, you got mean, it, Packers. Ty Montgomery started with the Packers. But with Packers isn't on here. Yeah, but I don't. But I'm saying that's the only team that I know him from. Oh, I thought you said. I'm almost positive he played for the Giants. And I know he played for the Giants. And I don't almost, know if he, I'm almost positive he played for the. I mean, here's where I think we get fouled up doing this grid. If you feel good about it, let it rip. No, I. Pissed. I'm pissed about that one. Yeah, that's okay. I swear. That's okay. I'm that's what I'm saying. I knew he played for the Giants, and I know he started with the Packers. All right, man. There's another running back. I know that we're. It's like not Matt Breida, because I know he played for the Giants. I don't think he ever played for the Lions, though. Who am I? I know there was a guy on the damn Lions. His name was Ty. Don't know. All right, whatever. We can't All waste right. time. All right. Um, Raiders, Jets. Should have been. It could have been Devontae Adams. Might still be. Um, yeah, man, of all those moves, all those guys leaving and jumping over, there wasn't anybody that jumped Raiders Jets. Um, yeah. Don't have too many. I mean, we have the quarterbacks with the passing yards and stuff, but any backups going through? Did Mark Sanchez ever play for the Raiders? Why I, do I feel like he did? I feel like he did, too. I he did. Let it rip. <laughs> Might as well let it rip. I think he did. Oh, no. Damn. damn. All right, Raiders Lions. Raiders Lions. Mm. Did Michael? No, I don't think Michael Crabtree ever played for the Lions. No. I think he played for the Jets, though. Michael I think Crabtree? he played for the Jets. I do. I do. No, <laughs> man, we are off today. I kind of like letting it rip, though. You know I what know. I mean? We're just we kind of getting through lollygag. it. We're not lollygagging around with it. All right. Um, well, any of the ones that we're feeling. Did Mike Glennon play for the Jets? Probably. <laughs> the Probably. I know he played for the Raiders. Yeah, I give Mike Glennon a rip there. Like no, his... Mike Glennon played for the Giants. Yeah, I know he played for the Giants. Maybe he played for the Jets, too. I don't think so, but we're already lost. Yeah, like... that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. I want to know that SC player. I want to know that SC player. All right. All right. Um, see, now it's just giving me every player that went to USC. Oh, no, it's not. Okay. Okay. Um, Reggie Bush. Did he play? I knew. I thought so. Um, That's uh, my bad. No, you're. I mean, I got the other one. Amon Ross St. Brown. Oh, duh. oh, I forgot. Yeah. Everson, Nicole Robbie Coleman, Matt Castle, Lawrence Jackson. I forgot Matt Castle went to USC. Yeah, it's Matt. Cody Kessler. Did he ever go there? Former Browns draft pick out of USC. I want to uh, know the Giants. Raider, Raiders. Oh, yeah. Giants Raiders. Lamas Brown, Herman Moore. No. I don't know like no. Him. No. I swear. Golden Tate. We could have got that one. I swear there was a running back. Oh, well, man. It is what it is. No dice. All right. Give me uh, give me Raiders. Go back. I want to do Raiders Giants. Ra Raiders Giants. Or Raiders Jets. Raiders Lions. Either one of this those. This is Raiders Giants. Jets. Ronnie Lott. Okay. Um, I don't know. Yeah, not too many. All right. Yeah, do the other one, then. Terrell Pryor. We could have got that. Oh, yeah. And then Raiders Lions. Raiders Lions, yeah. Damn, I should have got Terrell Dante Pryor. Culpepper. Amir Abdullah. Theo oh, yeah. Riddick. Yeah. Desmond Howard. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Not too bad there on the grid. We'll see how it goes. All right. Let's jump into time up. I want to wrap up with some Cavs discussion this morning to get ready for the game tonight. We'll remind you of our boost. We'll get to our bracket. We got it all right here on Big Play. Stay with us. Well, how do they know I'm doing this? Did somebody leak this out? It's social media. Oh. It's just that's the way social media oh. works now. I thought maybe you were just running that yap, 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 yap. Welcome to Big Play. A sports media team that started back in 2014, and now, we're not in a garage. Look at us, incorporating some of Cleveland's favorite sports personalities, bringing you fun and compelling content from downtown Cleveland. Coming to you live from the shores of Lake Erie in Burke Lakefront Airport, join Team Big Play for all the best sports talk in Ohio. Check us out on social media at Big Play, bringing you fun and compelling content from downtown Cleveland. Anthony Schlegel, just how physical he was. <laughs> you know, you saw, saw the, the girth and the power and everything he was bringing to the table, especially when he was a nice, beefy 255 playing middle linebacker. 
we were called soft last year. You don't want to be soft, especially when you come to the playoffs. So that's going to be a process throughout this season of establishing us as a harder team yep. here in the How does an Ohioan build the perfect parlay? Who's got something? Big guys looking for long odds. The kids in Columbus are covering better than anyone. And at even odds. If it's even, I'm leaving. Listen, our championship DVD starts today. All right? Dude, I just got an invite to a Cincy playoff watch party. Shut up. Cincy, State, Cleveland, the perfect parlay. I'm a genius. For the best odds on Ohio sports, bet with your cojones. It is Spanish, dummy. Bet with typical sportsbook. I don't buy into this nonsense, this conspiracy nonsense that he's got his money and he's dogging it. He, that's ridiculous. Let's get you in a little bit of time up here on the 2nd of April. This is so weird how things work, man. Like, I'm going to wish a birthday to somebody, and literally, I just got a tweet with this person in it. I guess it's because it is their birthday. It looks like a birthday celebration. I don't know. It's so weird how the world works. And in fact, we're going to bring somebody up on a show that we mentioned earlier. Oh, yeah. Time is a flat circle, baby. Here we go. All right, go back in time, including one year ago today, there was a report that the Browns had to be putting... Actually, I'm sorry, this was, I think, two years ago today. Anyway, the Browns had to put $169 million in escrow for Deshaun Watson's deal. It had to have been two years ago. There's no way it would have been this uh, last year. Because a lot of these big deals, they started talking about it with the Brown family down in Cincinnati. Yeah, you want to sign Joe Burrow to that deal? You have to have that money in escrow. You can't be like, oh, no, I'm good for it later. No, 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 You got to put that money in now. It's in a third party holding, at least for the guaranteed money or a good chunk of it. Now, I also tweeted that at this time that the Haslam's had to do this, they were getting their final payment of Warren Buffett because they sold their company to him. And I was like, I'm pretty sure the Haslam's will be good for it. I, I think they're going to be able to have that to put it in escrow. But they had to do that a couple years ago. Also, two years ago today, the Guardian signed Emmanuel Classe to a five-year extension. That five-year extension worked. Miles Straw? Not so much. Emmanuel Classe is filthy. I think he's getting better, too, which is just insane. Well spent there five years ago. Or, I'm sorry, uh, two years ago today on that five-year extension. We go all the way back to this day, 2007. Florida beats Ohio State for the back-to-back NCAA men's championship. Would you like the box score from that game? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Uh, 84-75, SEC gets the win. Your starters for Ohio State, Jamar Butler, Mike Conley, Ron Lewis, Ivan Harris, and Greg Oden. Conley and Oden both selected in the first round. For Florida, Torian Green, Lee Humphrey, Corey Brewer, Joachim Noah, and and Al Horford. Four of those guys, draft picks, Brewer, Noah, and Horford all in the first round. This was also the first time in NCAA Division I men's basketball history that exactly the same starting five won back-to-back titles. Noah Brewer, Humphrey Horford, and Torian Green. That will never happen again. 
Florida's Lee Humphrey also set the all-time NCAA tournament record for 47 three-point field goals made throughout the tournament. He surpassed Bobby Hurley with 42. That's a little stat for you here on a Tuesday. Uh, That Ohio State team, I mean, it was really Conley and Odin. You know, everybody thought Greg Odin was just going to be so good, and he problems done. It sucks. But um, it's kind of weird because, like, then you had your Diebler, Aaron Kraft era at Ohio State when they were really good. And you've just been crying or saying crap under Chris Holtman. And I hope Jake Diebler can turn it around there. But yeah, man, it does that not. And I go, I, we're coming up on 20 years ago for that, which is absolutely crazy. But Ohio State basketball has not been the same. It's just not been the same since, but we'll see. Uh, this day, 2001, pretty important day. Ichiro makes his major league debut, becoming the first ever Japanese position player to play in a major league baseball game. And, of course, just the fact that he amassed the hits that he did in the short amount of time that he did, one of the best. And also, he had a, you ever see that video of him throwing? He had a cannon. Yeah, he did. Like 95 off the mound if he really needed to. So an all-around player. This day, 1995, the baseball uh, a strike came to an end after 232 days. At the time, it was the longest strike. Uh, well, I guess strike counts because hockey was a lockout. This was a player strike that it, at the time was the longest lockout strike in of the major sports, and it was the first one to lose a postseason. Now, of course, hockey was the whole year. They lost everything. We'll see how it goes. For all you basketball fans out there, Mark Price had a free throw streak of 77 straight makes came to an end. This day, 1993, you know the salt in the wound, Ryan? He was one free throw away from tying Calvin Murphy's NBA record of 78 straight. Wow. One short of tying the record, two short of owning it for Mark Price came to an end. This day, 1993. This day, 1985, the NCAA adopted the 45-second shot clock. I, they need it for high school. I know that video everybody saw that went viral from Northeast Ohio and all that kind of stuff. Put the shot clock in everywhere. It's not that. I understand that there's some gyms that can't afford it or can't put it in or that kind of stuff. They need to have the shot clock. I frankly think college basketball could knock it down a few seconds. Oh, my God, yeah. Make it knock it down a few man. seconds. I don't know. I don't, where'd they come up with 24? I think 24 works, it's actually. Perfect. I don't know why, but it works. Uh, this day, 1917, Woodrow Wilson asked Congress for a declaration of war against Germany. Not the last time. That, that, of course, happened. Very happy birthday goes out to former Indians player and AL batting champion Bobby Avila. Larry Drew. What was La- what did Larry Drew say he was? Remember when he was the coach of the Cavs and they kept asking him, are you the head coach? And he wouldn't say if he was the head coach. Before did he call time. himself the voice? For my time. Hey, no, it wasn't. It was like. Larry Drew? Yeah. Hang on. Oh, I guess. Wait. Oh, yeah. 2018. He took over after Ty Lu. On March 19, 2018, the, the, the Cavs named Larry Drew the interim head coach. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, wait. That was when Ty Lu left for health issues. Then in October of 2018, remember Ty Lu like basically stepped down, but they fired him, and Larry Drew took over the rest of the 2018 season. You don't remember that? No. Yeah. And then went to JB. He was named the permanent head coach on November 5th and then let go after the year. And yeah, then no. we brought J- No, 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 no. Then we brought in oh, John yeah, Beeline. Yeah, yeah. But it was Larry. Dr- what did he call himself? I think it was the voice. That's it. That's he. he they kept asking him. Are you the interim head coach? And he just said he's the voice of the Cavs, not the interim coach. He just kept calling himself the voice. So, happy birthday to him. Uh, Bill Romanowski, Pascal Siakam, Alec Guinness. What famous cinematic character from one of the biggest franchises in history did Alec Guinness play? Mm, No idea. Obi-Wan Kenobi. He was the original Obi-Wan in the original Star Wars trilogy. Alec Guinness. Zach Bryan, who was the one that I just saw a video of him getting slammed with cakes, I guess for his birthday. Happy birthday to him. Uh, Quavo, Pedro Pascal. Man, you got to finish Last of Us. You've got to do it. 
What's that movie that he's in with Nicolas Cage too, which is hilarious? Oh, the, the, it's, it's, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't know the name of it, but like that meme of him just gets me going. Pedro Pascal is awesome. He's so good. And then Marvin Gaye, the late great Mr. Marvin Gaye, celebrating birthdays today. All right, a movie and a television show for you today. He's gonna be a little hard, I think, for you. We start a television show that, ironically, we have just recently brought up in Time Hop before. It debuted this day, 1978. 1978. So it's an older television show. Any guesses to start? Nothing? No. Okay. It was brought up. Oh, okay. I'll do it this way. It's a series revolved an affluent and feuding Texas family. Dynasty? No. Oh, Dallas? The, Dallas is oh. correct. Who shot JR? That's right. That's right. Dallas came out this day, 1978. All right, final one. A, a film that came out this day, 1968. Now, technically, well, all right. It, it had its premiere this day, and it gets released to the nation tomorrow in 1968. Do you want to do it today, or do you want to do it tomorrow? Do it today. Okay. This is an epic science fiction film. Inspired by the short film, The Sentinel. It's a prehistoric tribe of people that are driven away by a rival tribe. Next day, they find an alien monolith. The tribe then learn to use the bone as a weapon after their first hunt. And then it talks about millions of years later, they go into space. Critics noted for its exploration of themes such as human evolution, technology, and artificial intelligence, and the possibility of extra uh, extraterrestrial life. This is a movie? Yes. What year again? 1968. Space Odyssey? That is correct. Yeah, okay. 2001, A Space Odyssey. It was nominated for four Academy Awards, winning Stanley Kubrick yeah. for Best Director. Uh, the film is now widely regarded as one of the most influential films ever made. Wow. Here is the list on National and International Survey of Critics and the Public. As the, I don't think we have any time to run through all of this. There is an insane list here of what the films considered to be the greatest films ever made. For Sight and Sound, Citizen Kane, Vertigo, The Tokyo Story, and 2001 A Space Odyssey. Audience polls of the greatest films ever made. Gone with the Wind, The Godfather, The Empire Strikes Back, Shawshank Redemption, Titanic, and The Lord of the Rings Trilogy. Mad Max 2, which is a great flick was voted as the greatest action film in a reader's poll by the Rolling Stone in 2015. Die Hard was voted the best action film of all time of directors, actors, and critics on one thing. <laughs> the best Christmas movies of all time, It's a Wonderful Life and Die Hard. Bruh, well, there you have it. Empire readers voted it that way. It's an interesting it's list. It's an interesting list. Greatest two horror movies based on the Rolling Stone and a total film poll, The Exorcist and The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Mm. I'd go Halloween, but that's just me. Yeah, I, I, I could have guessed that. I don't know. Well, speaking of horror stories, that's kind of where the Cavs have been recently. They're back in action tonight against the Jazz. Ryan, am I wrong for really having the belief that this has got to be a get-right game for the Cavs? I mean, I, 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 I'm putting... This is the season with Easter. All my eggs in this basket. That if the Cavs struggle tonight, and I don't think they'll lose this game, but really, if they do not just dominate, dominate the Cavs tonight, I'm sorry, the Jazz tonight, I'm going to start having a real worry about where this team is going. I'm hearing what Donovan Mitchell is saying. He's saying the right things. We're not in a good place right now. No. You have time to fix it, but here's my thing. If... We're on the path towards crap. 
We're not there yet, but we're on the path. I don't even like that of where we're at. You have a chance to get off of it. And it's all about this streak that you're, I'm sorry, this road trip that you're on. Number one, you had a bad game against the Nuggets. Okay, fine. It's the Nuggets. I get it. You have got to smoke the Jazz tonight. And then you I, you got to play well against two LA teams and get, like, here's how I was like, you have four games left on this. I honestly think I need three and one. So you get one tonight against the Jazz. I'm talking about two and one against the Lakers, the Clippers, and the Suns. That's a tall task, man. Yeah, and you're going to tell me that the Clippers are not going to be pissed off after you beat them here the last time you faced them. They're not going to forget that. They were playing to win that game. And you beat them. So you, then LeBron? LeBron? He doesn't like losing to this team. There's no way. Not at his house there. now. A little bit. A little bit. And the Suns are a team that I've notoriously kept saying over and over again. I think they should be really good. And they're really not. Dude. Well, you just got proven you got blown out by the Nuggets, and you can say all you want about the Nuggets. I understand they're one of the best teams in the NBA, but you just proved to the world that you're nowhere near close to being a championship contender like they are. Now you're going to face a lowly team in the Jazz. Let's just prove we're not that low. You got well, to get some, and, and, and make get up right. some ground here, That's, man. It is a little bit of a, cons- uh, a comparison to sit there and say we're not them. You know, okay, so we know that we're not them talking about the Nuggets and all these other teams. I just need to prove that we're not the Jazz either. Yeah, I need to prove that you're not the Jazz. Exactly. That's why 12. A hefty spread there. But I like it. I like the Cavs to be able to cover it tonight and get it done. Other things I'm watching for tonight. Some of the, like, you know, Evan Mobley has been a set. We put Darius Connor back in the booth. We put him back in. It's good karma for DG. I've, 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 I've made peace about where I'm at with Darius Connor. It just is what it is. Doesn't mean I don't want him to go off tonight because he's in our boost, but I'm just saying. Kind of made peace where it's at. I think Mobley looks good off this injury. I like a little more shooting here for Max Struess to get it figured out. Cavs have no reason to lose. They have no excuse to lose this game tonight. The only thing is, what what is JB been harping on? Effort, right? Effort. Are they going to show up with this effort? Because when they play these lesser teams, they seem to come out with crap effort. It's going to be all about the I should take them on the first quarter on Tipico. I wonder what that is. I mean, you want to sit here and talk about effort, Matt. You're going against Donovan Mitchell's old team. You, this whole year we talked oh, about yeah. it being. Well, we're, we're talking about sex, it being. Yeah, they're, they're, we talked about it being. A, we talked about this whole oh, yeah. year being an audition for Donovan Mitchell. You go and be a shell of yourself and lose to his former team. What does that have to say to him? All right, NBA Cavs. Can I bet on the first quarter here? Um, player threes, player defense combo, first points, triple doubles. I can do, oh, yeah, 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 first quarter, right here, first quarter, Cavs four and a half. Do you think they're going to lead the first quarter by four, by five? Do you think they're going to get that? No? Not feeling it? No, I don't know, Matt. All right. Well, you just want to get to our boost because it's the one that's going to win tonight. I hope so. Yeah, Cavs, let's go. Come on now. I, I, I'm, I, we should go, Do- we should have gone Donovan because it is the Jazz. I'm feeling a good one for Darius Garland. I love 24 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. DG's due for a 25 point game himself, let alone the yeah. assists and the rebounds. So we had to take that. It's a big spread, but we got to take the Cavs on that. And then, of course, we'll round it on out with a little bit of Max Struess. Ryan, what are we boosted on up to, please? Boosted to a healthy plus 445. There we are. Get it in. Cavs boost. Typico, we'll send that out. Bet placed, boom, right there. Get signed up today. Use that code FONTANA100. For new customers with that code, bet and deposit $25. on. You bet on whatever you want. You get $100 in bonus bets. And you'll also, Ryan, $78 of my $100 cash back. When I hit that $100, 5% of your average bet back to you in a bonus credit there. You're off to the races and betting with Typico. Get signed up today. The, the cashbacks are so easy. All you got to do is bet like you normally do. You don't have to get tokens and then cash them in for this, and then you get this over here, and then you get to decide. What, no, it's easy. It's right back into your account. In fact, you want to know what? I have a protected bet credit for baseball. You want to use that tomorrow? Yeah, let's use it tomorrow. Let's use it tomorrow. I've got that going on. What promos do I got going here? I got to protect. This is just me. You might have some of these in your account, but I know I have them. $5 protected bet on soccer, a $10 protected bet on the leading point getter in the NBA. Uh, a- ooh. Ooh. Did you see this one? The Slugger Spectacular. You could earn a $25 bet credit 
if a grand slam is hit in a game that you bet on. Mm. Like you just bet on the game. Yeah. And then you have grand slam, you get a $25 thing right there. I think the Reds had a grand slam yesterday. I Triple think. threat. Bet on any game with 33 plus three pointers and make an extra $10 same game parlay bet credit. Dude, I love this, man. I love Tipico. There's so many great stuff. I'm working on my rewards here. Um, Got my bonus. Got my bet credit that I'm going to use. Forfeits on the 4th. Oh, yeah, so we'll use it tomorrow. Use it tomorrow. I got to use it by 6.25 p.m. On, on Thursday. We'll get it rolling tomorrow. Yeah, we'll get it tomorrow. There you go. $10 bet credit. I love it. I love it. Typico, get that code, Fontana100. Final uh, check this morning, Ryan, of our Twitter question up this morning. Would you be okay using tax dollars? Or do you have a problem using tax dollars for the Browns facility, wherever it may be? Our results this morning. An evil, well, not even, but perfectly round numbers. 70% no, 30% yes. I mean, that's 70% of our poll says we can use tax dollars for this. That's, I think that's something to be said to the Haslam's. That's something to be said about the city of Cleveland. Because you got to remember, city of Cleveland, yes, they need to look out for us. We can't go bankrupt. They need to keep the bills and the lights on. I get it. But if seven, just on this small poll, but I would imagine, Ryan, that a, a good chunk, I'm not talking about 52% of the population here in town. For the majority of people, I think they're okay with it. So with that in mind, what do we want? Get it done, City of Cleveland. Yeah. I'm asking Mayor Bibb and his people. I'm, again, I'm not saying to bend over and just say, hey, whatever the Haslam's want, sure, we're done here. You take all this money. No, you got to work on this. You got to make some offers. You got to make some acquies. You got you to gotta acquiesce to them a little bit, right? You got to make some concessions. Those are all negotiated. I'm asking the same thing for the Haslam's. I'm asking the same thing for them. So I appreciate Brian Casey, city councilman, trying to come up with this Art Modell rule. That, that's not going to fly. That's not going to. Wait. Is that a current law? I think it was a current law that he brought up. I don't think it was a proposal. I guess you're right. Yeah, because they passed that in 1996. Oh, my God. I thought that was a fake. I thought that was no. like he was proposing. it. You're right. Yeah. All right. They must have passed that, right? Wait. I just don't think anybody knew about it. No, probably not. When if you had to enact that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, if that's the thing, what else are you going to do? I mean, but moving to Baltimore and then moving to Brook Park. Well, that's, a stretch. that's different. Yeah, and they're they're staying in Northeast Ohio. I understand all of that. Um, I'd like them to stay downtown. We'll figure it out. I think eventually things are going to start to loosen up. They're going to start having conversations. We'll get reports on that. I know the Northeast Draw Transportation blog will be all over it. We'll see how it goes. All right, Ryan, final thing, our bracket of the week. Best bar in Cleveland. The finals. I already voted Clevelander. It's up at Matt Fontana's show. Drop us a follow there and vote on our bracket. I went Clevelander. Best bar in Cleveland. I went Clevelander as well just for you. All right, there we go. Early results on that? Do you have it pinned? Oh, no, you got the show pinned. That's a good, good option there. Uh, it's close early. Yeah, fat heads with a lead. Fat heads with a little bit of a lead here. A little bit of a lead, but Clevelanders in second. Scorchers going to have to make up some ground there uh, as we go. All right, great stuff. Want to promote again for everybody. I'm shooting some stuff for Tipico today, so we've had some great NCAA basketball content. That'll be out, so follow Tipico, follow Big Play. Tuesday's big day, Josh Maria Cribs tonight with the return, and we have Enter the Jungle, James Rapine and crew. A lot going on with the Bengals down there. So check it all out. Big Play, check us out on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. We're on Twitch, at Matt Fontana Show. It is across everywhere that you need it. Uh, and bet with our friends at Tipico tonight. I'm pretty excited. What else we got tonight? No basketball? Oh, we got the NIT going on. Women are done until this weekend, right? Yeah. So we're done. Guardians tonight. I want to do a Guardians boost. I need to stay away. I'm a little cold on the guards right now. Didn't cash last night. A little tough on that, but we'll see. Uh, we got to catch a little early today. I got dentist appointments for my kids and a lot of stuff dude i'm running around doing a million things so we appreciate everybody joining us this morning get out a little early today back wednesday tomorrow same time same channel we'll talk to you then for ryan tyler i'm matt fontana as always take it easy well how do they know i'm